this section we're still covering the RoboMaster, but I'm going to focus on how to specifically cut a printed image. Now when you cut a printed image, the one thing on the printed image that you need is what they call registration marks. So the question comes up is why the registration marks? Well first, they're a mapping system for the Craft Robo. The Craft Robo will actually read these and then after it reads these registration marks, it'll actually know where to go. It'll get the start point, the direction, and the angle of where it's supposed to put this for the cut line. Now, three marks are needed. Now, there's not much you have to do. You just go to RoboMaster and you turn them on there, and they look like little L brackets like you see here. Well, what are the steps to cutting your printed image? Well, first is to design what you're trying to cut, uh, what colors you're going to use, and so forth. Then you group all the objects except for the images. You group all the objects together, excluding the images, and then you create a cut line for the group. And you'll see how the, why this is as we move on. Next, we'll create a cut line for the images themselves. Now, if any of the cut lines overlap, we'll weld them. And then we'll turn on the registration marks. We'll print the image, we'll load it onto the Craft Robo, and then we'll cut. So those are the steps that we need to take. So let's go into RoboMaster and take a design and follow these steps. To start off with, remember the first step is to create the design that we're going to cut. And that's what we have here. Now I have a mixture of things. I have a mixture of line objects such as the hearts, this rounded rectangle, and of course the text. And then of course I've got a bitmap image here or a photo image here of two little girls with their arms around each other. The next step is to, to create a cut outline for the line information, all the hearts and this rectangle. Okay. And then we'll take care of the bitmap. Now the first thing we have to do in order to create a, a cut line around these hearts and this rectangle is we need to group all these objects together. So let me go ahead and do that now. And the way this is done is I select them all and I click on edit and then group. Now I don't want to create an outline on this by using our offset shape because what it'll do is it'll remove all the color and just do the outline. So what I do want to do though is I want to create a copy. And the easiest way of doing that is click on Edit, Copy, and then click on Edit again, and then click on Paste. And it pastes it right over. Just to show you, there's my second copy. I'll click on Edit, Undo to get it back to where it was. And now I can create an offset shape or an offset line for my cut line. So I click on this button here, and point one is actually perfect where I want it. Uh, you can have whatever size you want, but I want to keep it point one because it will keep it outside so you'll actually see the cut line for demonstration purposes once again. I'll click OK, and there it is. Now sometimes when it creates an outline, a duplicate, this actual outside line will look like the blue inside line. If that's the case, all you have to do is come down here click on the line settings and just change the lines. The next item we want to trace, our next step is, is the bitmap. Now I can't just easily click on this offset shape because it isn't a shape, it isn't made of lines. So I need to create a line around it. I know what you're thinking. We can cl easily click on ellipse and create an oval to fit right around the girls. But that takes a lot of time because you're trying to resize it, making sure it's exactly the same distance as what's over here on the heart and the rectangle here. So the best way of doing that is to create an outline using the Get Outline feature. That's the one that I was telling you earlier where it'll take a bitmap and then trace the outline. Let's go ahead and go there now. Now when you get into this is you notice it's oversized, it's larger. I want to see the whole thing so it's a matter of just clicking on View and saying Fit and there it is. Now what I want to do is I want to make this whole oval kind of black uh, so that it'll trace, especially around here. Because if, if it started tracing around this oval, it'll start coming up the little girl's back here. And I don't want that. So what I can do is I can increase the threshold again to make it a little bit darker. And there it is. Just a little bit more. Okay. 
Now, I also have all these little spots that I don't want it to trace, so what I then can do is once again click on this outer frame only, which will ignore all these inside pieces. I can then convert to outline, and there it is. So now I just paste, then edit. Now it's on there, but as you recall, when you use that get outline, it brings it here, it actually groups it with the bitmap, which is kind of a good practice, so it keeps things together. But in this case, I want to ungroup it so that I can create the outline from that. So I'll go ahead and right click, or I can click on edit and ungroup. I'll click on the line itself, and then I'll go to this offset shape. The value is 0.1 again, it's outside, I'll click OK again, and there we have it. So now we have the oval, and we have around all the vector shapes. So basically, this is done. Now the only thing I have to do is, you notice how this outline and the outline on these vector objects are crossing over. Well, we have a simple tool, as you recall, to take care of that. I'll click on the oval around the girls, and then I'll hold the shift key down, and then click the second outline. And then I come up here to my weld tool, and I just weld them together. And there we have it. Well, the print is ready, or the design is ready. The cut line is ready. Now I have to create registration marks. It's real simple. This button here, you just click on it. You click on Use Registration Marks. Just a note on a couple of these options. Size is the size of the registration marks. Origin, I wouldn't mess with that. It just puts the origin in a different spot. And the distance between the registration marks. In this case, you really don't want to mess with this unless you've got a special need. In this case, I want to keep things the same. So then I'll just click OK. And there we have the registration marks. Now a little note here. When you're turning on the registration marks, what it also is going to give you is this little cross-hatched area, or this grayed area. And basically what that's telling you is that make sure that none of your objects are within this gray area or else they won't cut. It's similar to what I told you earlier about this red line, that that's the cut area. Well, they've added a little bit more only because the sensor needs to sense these registration marks, and if there's a line in here, it may pick up that rather than the registration mark. Just a little note. Well, we're pretty much ready. The only thing I need to tell the software is what lines to cut and what lines to print. As you notice, that we have line information here. So we've got to tell RoboMaster which ones we want to cut and which ones we want to print. And once again, we go to this button up here, Output. Go to our Cut Settings. Click this button, which is the Cut Line Settings. So here I am. I have the blue, which I don't want to cut. I want to print the blue. So I turn this off, and I want to cut with a solid line the red or the magenta color. So that's checked. So everything's set now. I'll click OK, I'll click OK here, now everything is ready to go. Let me go ahead and print this out. To print, I just Thank you for watching. For more information, please contact us today.